Hey Techno Studs, in this video we're going to get into ICMP and talk about what ICMP is and what it does for us. In this video, we're going to get into ICMP protocols and we're going to talk about ICMP protocols. We're going to talk about host reachability and some of the return, the reply uh, messages that we'll get back both in IP version 4 and IP version 6. We're going to get into trace route and how trace route can help us out. And then finally, we're going to wrap it up with a short discussion on neighbor discovery protocol. We see that ICMP sits at this layer three. It sits right next to IP version four and IP version six. So it is a layer three protocol, although it operates a little differently. Where we see IP version four and IP version six are used for routing, ICMP is really not used to route packets. And in fact, actually, we include an IP version four and IP version six header on the front end of our ICMP packets. So if we were to actually take a look at the uh, datagram unit here, the it would take the place of this TCP. You wouldn't have data at the end of this, but it would take the place of this TCP header right here. That's where it would sit right there. Although it doesn't have a TCP or UDP layer four onto here. So, and it uh, operates on this layer three still. ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. ICMP, as we mentioned, operates at layer three and it's a way for devices to communicate back and forth to message about what's happening with IP packets. So for instance, ping is an example, a well-known example of how ICMP uh, packets can communicate. So a ping, if I'm this computer right here, I can ping a device that's over on the other end. But if I am not able to get packets to the other end, I may end up getting a notification back from one of these other layer three devices saying that network can't be reached or for some reason uh, you're not able to get to the end device. And so perhaps this machine right here recognizes that that machine or that network is unreachable at the time and it might send a message back saying that the host is unreachable or the destination service is unreachable or the time to live has exceeded so there's different messages that could be sent back to this machine or it may re uh, receive a message back that it has been received successfully so uh so yeah so this is it's a messaging protocol that allows this communication back and forth to see if uh, lines are open and connections are if there's any kind of difficult difficulties and we'll take a little bit further look into that as we go along So as I mentioned, one of the examples is ping, and there is a, this machine will send an echo request. And that echo request will hopefully make it to this end machine, and that end machine will send back an echo reply. And then once we get the echo reply, then we get some information. For instance, we know that this machine is up, but we also get information that the path is clear and you're able to get to there. Uh, we also get some message like the, uh, some information like the time, the total time it takes to get there and back, the travel time that it takes in milliseconds. So it uh, includes a lot of good information on, um, on what is happening with that link. So as I mentioned, there are several different messages that can return back. For instance, if this machine may send back that there is a protocol unreachable or the port is unreachable, or maybe one of these machines, maybe the router sends back and says the host is unreachable, or maybe one of these machines says that the network is unreachable, but there are types right here that is included in the uh, within the information that's being sent back. So that way this machine knows why it's not receiving an echo reply or, or rather why it's not receiving an echo reply from this machine. ICMP 
also has some similar types that it can return, such as no route to the destination. So perhaps one of these uh, routers sends back a message that says that network is not within our routing table. So the route or uh, no route to the destination. Um, perhaps there's a firewall in, in between here and there. And so this firewall may return that it's you're not allowed to make it into that network and it's administratively prohibited. Uh, there is a the beyond the scope uh, of source address. There is the address unreachable and the port unreachable. So several different types of messages that can be sent back in this reply to notify this machine why it has not reached its end destination. So part of our IP version 4 header is there's a time to live. And part of our IP version 6 header, there's a hop limit. And so that means that every single hop, that hop limit or that time to live will be decremented by one. So if we have a hop limit of two and it goes to this router and then it goes to this router, that's two hops, then it will send a message back and says, that destination is unreachable. Unreachable. So uh, when we do a ping, we can actually set what the time to live or the hop limit is. And so we get a reply back saying that that destination is unreachable. Uh, of course, most of the time it's a very high, the time to live and hop limit is set very high. So it makes it to its destination and sends it back. But it is something that we can change as a setting when we do our pings. And the reason why that is important is because Traceroute will actually do use that in order to map out what is between the two machines that are trying to communicate. So let's say this machine is pinging this machine right here. And a Traceroute, what a Traceroute will do, you type in Traceroute on a Linux machine or TraceRT on a Windows machine. And what it will do is it will send out a Re, a, a request out, a ping essentially out, and it will have a time to live of one. And then you will get a response back from this device right here saying destination unreachable, but you get some additional information about this machine right here, this router that's right here. And then this machine will send something out saying, okay, I want to send a message a request, a, a do a ping request to this machine right here. I'm going to set a time to live of two and it will send out and there's one and two. This router right here will send a message back saying destination unreachable and will include some information about this router right here. Then next, I am going to send out a ping request with a uh, time to live of three. So it's gonna go one, two, three then this router will send a message back and saying here is uh, that destination is unreachable and here's some information about myself. And then you send out a message with a time to live of four. And then this actually gets to its end destination and a reply back says, yeah, you've reached me everything is good to go. Meanwhile, now you have all of the information about the hops or a lot of the information about the hops in between. And uh, so this can be valuable because perhaps maybe you're trying to figure out what is going wrong? Where Where is the communication stopping? Well, this could be one of those things that can tell you like how far your, your packet is getting before it gets dropped. Or it could also tell you if there's big delays between these two devices, it will say, well, this, there wasn't much delay from this device. There wasn't much delay from this device, but there was a ton of delay from this device right here. So perhaps this machine right here, this router is swamped with traffic right now, or perhaps this link is swamped with traffic and causing issues. So we get a lot of information with Traceroute that we don't get with a, just a regular ping. So ICMP packets are not just for troubleshooting and ping. We do use it for other things, especially in it's very critical when it comes to neighbor discovery protocol in IP version six. And so I, the neighbor discovery protocol will use uh, router 
solicitation and router advertisement to find out what IP address it should have. So there will be a router solicitation that will go out that is sent to the router and then if there a router advertisement will come back with information on how to get out to the rest of the world. So that is neighbor discovery protocol, and that is the router solicitation and router advertisement to set up this machine so it knows how to get to the outside world. So, but then another thing that it will do also is maybe it needs to communicate somewhere within its network, then it will send out a neighbor solicitation out and say maybe it's trying to figure out the uh, I the MAC address associated with a certain I, IP version 6 IP address and so then this machine will send back a, na a neighbor advertisement back saying okay that's me here is my MAC address so ICMP although is largely used for troubleshooting there's quite a bit but we also use it for other type of discoveries and this neighbor solicitation and advertisement and uh, router solicitation and advertisement is one example of that it's with the neighbor discovery protocol. There you have it. So ICMP basics, we talked about the ICMP protocols. We talked about host reachability and using ping to reach out to hosts and the information we get back from them, both from IP version four and IP version six. We talked about trace route and how it can use and give us additional information uh, beyond what just ping gives us. And then we talked about neighbor discovery protocol, which I go much more in depth into uh, in another video of mine. So you can go and look that up if you want to find out more about great neighbor discovery protocol. So thanks for watching my video and we'll catch you next time. Hope you're enjoying the videos. If you like them, could you hit that like button?